Crohn's disease is a type of inflammatory bowel disease, or IBD, where the immune system attacks and inflames bits of the intestines. It can cause diarrhoea, pain, fatigue, and consequent disruptions to daily activities like school and work. There are treatments, but unfortunately, currently no cure. Now, scientists in the US have found that a fungus used industrially in foods like wine, cheese and cured meats called Debaryomyces hansoni seems to be thriving in gut wounds in mice and getting in the way of the wounds healing. And they think a similar thing is happening in the inflamed intestines of the small number of Crohn's disease patients they studied. This hardy yeast can survive extremes of temperature and saltiness, which could maybe explain how it can outcompete the other many microbes in the intestines and gain a particular foothold in these wounds. My name's Katie Haler, and I spoke to study author Thaddeus Stappenbeck. We found that a dominant fungal organism was present in non-healing wounds in patients with Crohn's disease. We can do endoscopy on the mice, and we can take a small pinch of tissue uh, out of the lining of the intestine. Normally, this will heal properly within a few weeks. But what we found is in the mice that had the presence of this fungal organism, this would get into these wounds and it would prevent healing. You've tried to kind of model essentially what's going on in inflamed guts of people with Crohn's, but you're doing that in mice and you found high levels of this yeast which can get into these wounds and cause a problem. That's exactly right. Do you know specifically how the yeast is actually stopping these wounds from healing? There are cells, immune cells within the wound bed that are designed to gobble up and take in any microbes that they encounter. They typically take these in and then they, they kill them. What's really interesting with this particular fungal organism, this gets taken up by these cells within the wound bed. Um, they're called macrophages. These macrophages don't kill this organism. So this organism persists within these cells within the wound bed. Do you know if this same thing that's happening in your mice is actually happening in people with Crohn's? We think what's going on in the mice is happening exactly in the patients. Uh, so what's happening is that this, uh, this fungal organism gets into the wound beds and it inhibits repair in both the mouse model system and in humans. And we have evidence uh, at a molecular level that would support that. How did you get that molecular evidence? Were you taking bits of gut from people with Crohn's and seeing if there was yeast in it? We did, yes. But then we could show that there's a signature in blood that indicates the, uh, this infection uh, in, in the wounds. We could find these, these same molecules in our mice that were infected, and we could find these same molecules in our patients. The mice that you were using to model this situation, they had been treated with antibiotics prior to this, right? So is, is that part of the reason why the yeast is able to thrive because you've killed off a bunch of the other microbes. In the initial experiments, we, we needed to use antibiotics and injury to see this particular yeast get into the, into the areas of the wounds. What we think the antibiotics represent is a disruption of the normal microbes that are present in the intestine. It's very similar to what happens in patients with IBD. If it is a genuine reproducible problem, what does this study hint that you can do about it? Right. So it, it suggests that, that, that you could actually try and prevent this or you could treat it. What our next goal is to be able to take a small amount of blood from, from someone with Crohn's disease, know if they have this infection. And then if they do, we would uh, devise methods to actually treat them. Uh, so these would be some of the current um, antifungals that exist. We would, we would test those. And there's also the uh, opportunity to develop new antifungal drugs to, to approach this problem. Is there any way of targeting, not necessarily the yeast, but the bit of the inflammatory response that the yeast encourages? Yeah, one of these molecules that these macrophages make that's in the blood, we, we think this is the molecule that's inhibiting the wound repair. So we, we could bypass the yeast completely if this becomes really difficult to treat. And we could actually go after trying to treat this component of the immune system that really is expressed at a high level that shouldn't be there. Is there a possibility of actually taking a step back and saying, well, maybe a dietary change would be appropriate? I think so. I think especially um, with people with, with moderate to, to severe Crohn's disease. So say their, their serum test is negative and they're not infected, then we would advise them to avoid certain foods that would contain this yeast. Having said all of this, 
you need to do further studies before you can really understand how this is working in the real world. Is it fair to say that you don't yet really know if this is a long-term problem or how severe this would be? We don't. We've looked at this now in a small number of patients, essentially in our hospitals in St. Louis and in Los Angeles. This needs to be followed up longitudinally with with patients, and it needs to be looked at in much broader populations before we can definitively say that, that this is something that will change patient care. People who have Crohn's disease are already probably on anti-inflammatory medications, aren't they? Would those medications not kind of cut it for this problem? What we would like to understand is this, how does this infection affect the responsiveness to certain drugs? There are cases where patients will be on a, a, an anti-inflammatory therapy and doing quite well, and then they'll stop responding to that. So what we would like to know is, is does this infection, does it play a role in that lack of response? Is it causative for that? Or is it just a consequence of people that stop responding to a medication? Thaddea Stappenbeck there from the Cleveland Clinic, who's now looking at whether this yeast crops up in other intestinal conditions like ulcerative colitis. And that work was recently published in the journal Science.